Why is Harry Potter popular? A question some ask in curiosity or confusion as to why this children's book became a literacy and film success and a must-love in this generation. Some call it luck or tremendous hard work from J.K. Rowling. Others claim it to be her use of a successful structuring formula in her books that worked in her favour. But what is the real reason? I'll be one of the first to put my hand up to say that I don't truly know that answer, but that I'll be going through three reasons as to why the internet and myself think the little wizard Harry Potter became so popular. Warning, this question would need more research, time and dedication to answer than I can give it currently within this video. This video should be viewed as base ideas, a starting paragraph and simple fun observations. Thank you. Reason 1. The Cinderella Formula no, not the movie or the psychological term Cinderella effect, but the Cinderella formula. And for those of you who aren't studying screenwriting, you may not know what the Cinderella formula is, so allow me to explain as best as I can. The Cinderella formula is a storytelling structure using the popular fairy tales, Cinderella, successful storyline into your own work. A simple but effective abuse rags to riches story. Here, let me show you the parallels and effectively how it works. We start with our main character in an abusive household, Cinderella, with her evil stepmother and awful stepsisters, while Harry is with the horrible Dursleys, his mother's sister's family. They are forced into labour, sleep in horrible conditions, and get no care or love from their guardians. Their guardians also tell them they won't be receiving the invitation from a higher up place or going to it. But then, suddenly, a fairy godmother appears for Cinderella, who informs her that she will be going to the ball, where she meets the prince who falls in love with her and they eventually get married. She leaves her abusive household and becomes a happy princess. While Harry gets a hairier fairy godmother, who informs him that he will be going to the wizarding school, Hogwarts, and that his parents left him a huge fortune in the hidden wizarding world. Harry gets to go to said wizarding school and becomes a happier wizard. There go rags to riches. The difference between Cinderella and Harry, however, is that Cinderella's story ends there, while Harry still has the rest of the first book to go and six more after that. But why does that make Harry Potter popular? Well, the reason this formula works so well is because we in society love hearing fairy tales and American dream success stories. We all imagine similar scenarios to Harry and Cinderella, where we will be whisked away to fortune, true love and success. It's relatable as anyone can assign themselves into the main character's shoes, and adding fantasy into the mix makes it even more longed for. That's partially why Harry Potter has so many readers. It always ends happy and gives the reader something to relate to and want in Harry's life. It's also why there are so many Cinderella movies and books set in multiple settings, as the story always has an audience wanting similar things to Cinderella and wanting to read slash watch that. It's only recently that tragic stories have become popular mainstream, such as Game of Thrones and Hunger Games. Greg Curie, a philosophy expert, points out that if we didn't see Harry at the Dursleys in his toxic environment and feel resentment towards his guardians, that we wouldn't have such a wonderful feeling towards the wizarding world and be as invested into Harry's story than if we started reading straight from when Harry arrived at Hogwarts. This shows how the Cinderella formula makes us feel bad for the main character, but also invested in how it's going to get better for them, and for Harry's story, that's only the first few chapters. Some may argue that J.K. Rowling uses this formula in all of her Harry Potter books, which is why her structure is often pointed out, as each book starts with Harry back at the Dursleys for the summer holidays, and that Harry has his hairy fairy godmother replaced by his school best friend Ron or the magical Order of the Phoenix, getting him back into the wizarding world a little earlier than September. Thus, the formula continues. But I personally disagree. J.K. Rowling, in my opinion, stops using the Cinderella formula after the first four books, because as the books go on, the wizarding world becomes more and more dangerous. Not only for Harry, but for the rest of the students there as well. The wizarding world and Hogwarts loses its shine that it had in the first book for Harry and its readers, as Harry starts to think beyond school and into the next battle with Voldemort he'll be having. It's not a metaphorical ball anymore, but a tense duty, an escape that puts him in danger, and a needed education for Harry, thus breaking down the formula. In the seventh and last book, Harry doesn't even go back to Hogwarts, breaking the formula even more, and that book is still successful without it. But, counter-arguments would obviously point out, by this point, J.K. Rowling had a massive community and fanbase who would obviously enjoy it and wanted an ending for a huge series. Reason 2. Escaping Reality Linking back to the first reason, I've never met a child, teenager or adult who didn't want to escape their reality for a fictional world, be it Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, the Marvel Universe or Harry Potter. Mostly it's Harry Potter, and who could blame them? As I said before, what JK Rowling achieves through the books, which goes on to the films, is that her audience feel themselves go on a journey with a relatable character. But that's not just it. Harry is also a special 11 year old boy who knows nothing about the wizarding world, like ourselves when we first read or watch. 
Harry asks a lot of questions, so we as a reader and audience learn as Harry does and feel even more involved in the experience. Even if you're a loyal chronological reader, J.K. Rowling makes a point to remind you at the start of each book about certain characters, the school, and what happened at the end of the last book to keep you immersed into the world. Another reason why Harry Potter is so popular is that it keeps you immersed through the entire series, with the usual cliffhangers and reveals, but also it doesn't let you catch up. Harry goes along with you and we learn together. Harry Potter lets us escape our responsibilities for an incredible magical distraction that leaves us hooked as each book gets more tense, asks and answers more questions and has a happy ending at the end of it. But again, that's not just it. There's a lot more than the source material on this reason, because this book series became so much more through the internet. A key factor in popularity is social media and websites, and Harry Potter has several of them. Its popularity soared in the 2000s, and multiple fan websites, role-playing groups, and communities for Harry Potter and the Wizarding World were created. Multiple Potterheads talked, debated, and loved these books passionately, involving multiple newcomers into their little community that stopped being little ages ago. Evidence of this shows itself all the time. Millions of fans raise their merchandise wands and say Loomis when a Harry Potter actor dies. They meet at King Cross Station on the 1st of September, and pretty much everyone gets sorted into one of the famous Hogwarts houses, and it only continues to grow. Another reason it's popular is because the community and the fandom never dies. Reason 3. Unlike and unlike anything else. There are obviously people who dislike Harry Potter, and it generally seems to be the older generation. They scream, it mimics other books. But I stumbled across this interesting article that summed up all of the plagiarising comments so neatly for me. Though I'm not sure I completely agree with it, the article reads, But these criticisms largely miss the point. It's true, the basic thumbnail premise of the Harry Potter series is indebted to the earlier fairy tales and kids' novels. That's part of what makes it instantly recognisable and therefore accessible to young readers. We go back to that theme of similar formulas in books and the American dream, which is what children are used to reading and are recommended. These books where good beats evil, hard work is paid off, and the underdog wins. The Golden Trio beats Voldemort, Hermione is constantly rewarded from her hard-working classes, and Harry Potter, the small forgotten orphan, wins. It's the perfect story for children to read as it fits so neatly in that category, while also being unique in its themes of racism, prejudice, death, and government. While it seems common criticism to say Harry Potter is alike to The Worst Witch series, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, Dickens' Oliver Twist, and Lewis's The Chronicle of Narnia, it doesn't matter, as there is also a lot that sets them apart. Further evidence being The Worst Witch themes are a friendship between young girls, not being the best in reputation. The Lord of the Rings themes are power, figures, and war. Oliver Twist themes are the failure of charity, a corrupt city, and class structure. And finally, the Chronicles of Narnia's themes are transformation, betrayal, and redemption. Children could read the multiple series and not find themselves bored, as there's unique points in each story, but also fantasy elements and structure they're familiar to. I argue that Harry Potter is a unique fairy tale, and while there's been plenty of arguments against that, hear me out. J.K. Rowling has created an entire magical world. Just listen to David Heyman, the producer of all the Harry Potters and the Fantastic Beast films, talk about her and her notebooks filled with information about this world and the school. She dedicated herself to this series, and no one can deny her hard work. Sure, there are overlaps that critics love to point out, but there's also so much originality, like The Sorting Hat, The Ministry of Magic, Diagon Alley, and The Room of Requirement. From the first book, we are thrown into an entirely different world with so much detail and time put into it that it's hard not to feel immersed. In all... I think I know why Harry Potter is popular. It's a little bit of everything. Luck, extreme hard work, continuing after multiple rejections, and because it's viewed as brilliant storytelling and will continue to be brilliant storytelling as time goes on. Children from all over the world have enjoyed the books or the films and will continue to do so for a very long time. Because, as I said, the community never dies. This year, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone celebrates its 20th anniversary. It has transformed a generation into a community of fellow witches and wizards. J.K. Rowling has created something that is ever-growing, and I don't think she could ask for more of a success. I have been Jasmine Kelly, and feel free to leave your own thoughts and opinions in the comments. Do you agree with all my points? Do you have anything to add? And with that, have a happy Harry Potter month. Goodbye.